She's had like six monster energies, so it's like a little jittery. A little Can't even pour the water. <laughs> Dropping everything. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Okay, now we're ready. Thank you, Kelsey. <laughs> oh yeah, I needed that. <laughs> All right, we are here with the 69 kilo national champion Chelsea Savitt and her coach, handler, partner, Andre. So to start off with, we'd like to just have you both speak about the day and how it went, um, and this would be a chance for Andre to brag about how good she did. <laughs> Should I go? <clears throat> Whoa, where's my voice? So today went really well. Um, coming into this meet, I had two goals. I wanted to win, and I wanted to punch my ticket for IPF Worlds, and both of those goals were reach goals for me. Um, my PR total coming into this meet at, in this weight class was 495 kilos. Mm -hmm. All time was 502 and a half, but that was in 2017, so I knew I needed to put 27 and a half kilos on my total to get a chance to go, as well as win the title. And um, I knew I'd have really stiff competition today. Uh, Claire Zay was really strong, and uh, she's put up that total before. Uh, so I knew I had an uphill battle today, but I also knew I had to come here and execute today. Um, I had no choice but to just come in and do the best that put everything together and put together as close to a nine-for-nine nine day as I could. And, uh, yeah, I think we, we, uh, we went eight for nine, um, but – I really think attempt selection today was perfect and uh, ended up coming through with that national title and almost got the Carpino one. Uh, third deadlift just slipped out of my hand a little bit, but uh, I'm still really happy and proud of myself. I feel like I left it all on the platform today and just showed up and executed and uh, yeah, finally had my breakout day um, in powerlifting. I've been, uh, my first meet was in 2013 and uh, I've done the national championship many times. I meant to look up the number of times that I've done nationals prior to this so that I had a count but I don't even remember how many I've done but I've taken second so many times and I've just been climbing towards first for a really long time I've always wanted it so it's a really big deal for me that uh I finally had my breakout day I'm really really happy and couldn't have done it without all the people in my corner um Kristen Dunsmore is my uh she does all my programming she's my coach I text her all the time with just like nonsense <laughs> um and Andre's in the gym with me all the time. And uh, Bill McCarthy today, he's handled me many times before. And uh, Andre and Bill are just a great power team. And uh, my family came out and my friends came out. And uh, yeah, I just had, I finally had the meet that I've been wanting for a really long time that I never thought that I would get because I had that back surgery after 2017. Um, so this is a really big deal for me, a really big day. Congrats. I'm really proud of myself. I guess I'll start. First of all, congratulations. Thank you. On being a national champion. That's freaking awesome. Thank and you. And congratulations on having that breakthrough performance that you wanted. Thank you. I was you. wondering if you might be able to just discuss what it's like for two consecutive years now, going head-to-head, -head, right, with some very formidable opponents. And yeah. the second part of my question is, how did the mindset shift this time when you also had a number that you were kind of chasing? Ooh. Hmm. I don't think there was a... Actually, I, I'll take that back. Last year was my first meet after my back surgery where I was really, like, taking it seriously. Like, whoa, I'm on the national platform again. It's been five years, and I'm here. I I was going into that meet, and frankly, uh, just I didn't know how my body would withstand a training cycle. Um I didn't know how I would do in the 69 kilo weight class, which was the lowest weight I've ever competed in. Um, there were just a lot of like, I was also competing sumo, never did sumo in a meet before. So uh, at least on a national platform. So I went into that meet, um, frankly, with a lot of just, hey, I just want to get through the meet and, you know, have this be a good meet. And, uh, you know, my opposition was my coach so I knew it was going to be fun and I knew it was going to be close we were going to challenge each other um so I would say going into that meet I uh not that I wasn't sure of myself but it really was like what am I going to do like I really had no idea how I felt like there were just so many unknowns and uncertainties for me going into that meet that 
it was very exploratory, if you will. So I was very happy with that outcome. I felt like I did really well, but I did miss a first bench due to missing commands. And uh, I only got one deadlift. And the first bench was probably just from being rusty from forgetting to listen to a command. And uh, missing my second deadlift was probably just should have been more realistic about weight selection. So I feel like going into that meet, I was sort of dusting off cob cobwebs uh, versus this meet. I did bench nationals six weeks ago. I did worlds last year and I did nationals last year. So I had a few more meets under my belt and those cobwebs were dusted off and uh, frankly had a lot of time to train. Um, even for nationals last year, I only trained like three months very consistently. And that was the most I had trained since my back surgery. Uh, so again, it was just so many unknowns and uh, exploratory, but it was still really fun. It was great. Um, so this meet, I just felt a lot more sure of myself. Like I knew that I was going to be a formidable opponent today. And, uh, you know, just based on some things that I did in the gym. And I'm someone who, frankly, I never lift less in the meet than I do in the gym. And I love that about myself. So I knew I had done some big stuff in the gym and uh, I lifted more today than, yeah, I've done in the you, gym. You had, you had a damn near perfect day. I had a damn near perfect day. So yeah, today I just, I knew what I was capable of and uh, I just knew I was not entitled to that title, um, how to work for it and I was ready to bring it. So a lot more fire this time and certainty, but also uncertainty. Because, you know, you can only control what you can control. If Claire, I think Claire, frankly, is stronger than me, but uh, just didn't have the perfect day. Whereas I think I had the perfect day today. Yeah. Or as close to perfect as it could have been. So It's what you needed to win. Basically. It's what I needed. Yeah. yeah. Other than, yeah, going off that, I know you said that you always hit more on the platform when you hit the gym, and you didn't post a lot of, like, your top end training uh, during your prep. What numbers did you hit in the gym prior? Uh, I hit a 185 squat. Funny, I did not even, I don't think I hit 125 bench. No, bench was suffering a bit, actually, for the past month, after bench nets. Yeah. So you, you actually peaked it really well for this meet. Yeah. And uh, it showed up nicely the day it needed to show up. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I actually hit 213 in the gym last week on deadlift. But it was wobbly, so it would have gotten three reds. Um, but 205 moved really well. So that was like the thing that showed up out of nowhere that I was really not expecting that showed up one week ago. Um, actually, in this prep, I was planning to pull conventional this meet. And uh, then, but I was keeping up my sumo training, um, just doing some volume. And then uh, a week ago, I had to hit a big squat, a big bench, and then just some sumo volume. Because again, I was keeping both. Um, I was doing both of the training because I feel like it's good to sort of, well, at least for me, I found that um, the balance of the sumo and conventional training just seems to be good for me in terms of keeping my hips healthy, keeping my back healthy, and making everything stronger. So up until one week ago, we thought I was going to pull conventional. <laughs> and then I had some sumo volume to do, and I was like, holy crap, this is moving really well. And then I was supposed to do some sets of five, and then I... Andre was in the gym with me, and I was already there like three hours, and I don't think that he wanted to wait for me to go and pull some singles now on sumo, because I had already hit my 185 squat. I hit a big bench. No, actually, I missed 125 last week. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, I was like, I texted Chris, and I was like, hey, I know I'm supposed to be doing sets of five today, but... I just moved 170 for five, like, really well. I want to try a single. And uh, so then I pulled 185, 195, 205, and they all just flew. And we're like, well, mm -hmm. put 213 on the bar, and I picked it up, and the strength was there. There was just a little bit of a, a wobble at the top, so it would have gotten three reds, but I knew I had the strength. So, yeah, and I put up to 12 and a half today for my third attempt, which would have got me that Carpino, and got this. It was a clean lift, but, you know, just uh, slipped out of my hand at the very top. So I think it was the perfect third attempt, though, and it was what I needed to secure that ticket, which I didn't quite get. I'm going to be in that alternate pool now, but I think I set myself up really well um, in that alternate pool. So I just did, yeah, I mean, I think today really was my breakout day. Just every attempt was the right attempt. And uh, yeah, so. Yeah, and to add to that, I think the, 
The biggest difference that we implemented after Worlds was that she started pulling sumo once a week and conventional once a week to do both. And adding the conventional deadlift thing back in actually brought up her squat strength. Now she was able to grind out squats better. Mm -hmm. And it also improved her sumo deadlift because she was actually pulling sumo less and beating up her hips less. And then actually the plan was to pull conventional up until last week when she finally had a breakout day on sumo. And uh, what I think did it was she skipped a week of pulling sumo, took two weeks off of sumo, and suddenly came back in there for a light day and had it. So she had a breakout on the deadlift only a week ago. We didn't think that, like, we weren't going to go above 205, but suddenly 212 became an option as of last week. Yeah. And the reason I skipped that sumo day is because I got sick and uh, I had two kind of crappy weeks of training because I was just, I don't know what was going on. I was just really sick. Also, we, like, lost power for a few days, and yeah. uh, that was pretty, that was not good. Um, so, yeah, um, that was awesome. And yeah, I didn't post that because, frankly, I, well, I was just listening to my handlers. They were like, no, 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 don't post your top end lifts. Don't show them what you got. Just bring it on the meet day. And, uh, it was a secret. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, that deadlift was a big surprise for me a week ago. But then I was like, well, I'm going to keep this in my, in my back pocket. Nobody needs to know about it until they see me do it on the platform. So, yeah. And now you can take that and take it to your next meet. Yeah. It'll be less of a surprise at the next meet, but it's not a you only get anymore. to surprise you only get to surprise people once, I think. Maybe we'll have another ten kilo surprise though. Maybe. Maybe there will be another ten kilo surprise. Alright, well I think that's it for Chelsea Sabbath. Unless anyone has any really burning questions, no, we'll let you go. Thank you so oh, much. Oh, cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the walk. Okay, are you good? We are with Kelsey McCarthy, 69 kilo third place finisher, Gregory Johnson in the 93s finishing second place. And to open with, we're just going to have you quickly tell us a little bit about how your day went for you. So go ahead, Kelsey. Uh, I mean, overall, it was probably a better day than I anticipated coming into it. Um, probably about four weeks ago, uh, training kind of stalled out a little bit on squat um, where I'd hoped it would end up. Um, so I kind of was a little up in the air of where that would end. Um, and was just kind of hoping on the uh, day it would return. Um, and it actually showed up better than I expected. Uh, for bench, um, it's been a struggle point for me probably my whole powerlifting career, um, especially my raw benching. So it was a five kilo PR. Um, it was kind of shooting for the elusive 100 kilo bench, but we'll uh, have to head back to the drawing board to find that somewhere. Um, and deadlifts probably went um, the best out of the three today. Um, in training, I ended up uh, finishing with a 195 single uh, about a week ago. 
and um, by the end of the, the third attempt, it was uh, my all-time PR was 205 raw, so we kind of decided to go for a little bit of a YOLO attempt and uh, see what what was there. Um, and it actually moved a lot better than I uh, anticipated, especially with a big jump from uh, second to third. Uh, for, for me, this was almost a last minute decision. I was basically just doing some sort of training to be able to make certain I maintained my lifting all the way up till June for Equip Nationals. But after a couple of calls with some great people reminding me that, yeah, technically you're qualified for this, why not? So I'm, I enjoy both sides of lifting. So today's lifting Squats were a really big surprise. I don't think I put anything above 260 on my back the whole session. It's been mostly volume. My coach knows I have notoriously bad knees, so I try to make certain that I limit <laughs> the amount of weight I put on my back, but apparently a lot of rest really makes for a very solid squat session. Uh, bench, we've been dealing with a torn labrum since 2021, so the whole goal was to slowly build up over time and make certain that I stayed healthy, but also got through attempts. So we're able to do that. At least I know that I can do 155 now, so we're slowly improving. And deadlift was, I can only like hit a big deadlift maybe like once a year. And so it takes me a while to build up to it, several months and coming off the heels of 2022 Worlds, I definitely was <laughs> detrained. So we took what we could. Today was a little slow, but you know what? We had fun with it and I'm just glad I got 355 in the end. Yeah, that was 2022 Worlds where you broke the <laughs> right, we'll pass over to Matt Gary. Um, congratulations to both of you on your performances. I think it's exciting to see uh, equipped lifters trying out raw, just as like I enjoy seeing raw lifters trying out the equipped stuff. Um, I got my start in the sport in equipped lifting, uh, probably before the two of you were both born, um, so that dates me. Um, but and and I used to use uh, raw training uh, kind of as a segue into the equip training. And I know, Greg, it sounded like you were kind of doing that at this meet. Um, is there a shift in mentality uh, or, or, or mental strategy um, when you're transitioning from one genre to the next? And how do you kind of cope with that, both of you? Uh, so usually if I'm, my focus is for an equip meet, um, I tend to not push my raw lifts as much. If I feel that it's there, um, I'll try to, to push it a little bit, but if I know something's bothering me, um, I'll just kind of hold it to where it was because I know the end game is switching into that equipment. Um, and I feel depending on where the injury is, sometimes just getting into the, the suit a little bit earlier actually saves me a little bit more and takes a little bit of stress off. Um, so kind of for me coming off of 2021 after – uh, World Games, I was having like a little bit of a quad and back issue. Um, we are going into Worlds in 2022. I don't, I didn't squat more than 155 kilos. Um, that was the most I put on my back and then I would just put my suit on and go up from there. Um, so that was kind of part of my decision was um, really wanting to be able to push my raw numbers and kind of see where they are, um, knowing that it definitely helps me translate once I put the gear back on um, and gives me a little bit more of a push once the gear comes back out. I would say that the mentality for me, honestly, no matter what, whether raw or equipped, I want to win. I want to be able to do my best. I want to be able to show it on the platform. But ultimately, I know that I don't can't possibly give 100% to everything. So sometimes I have to limit what I'm going to be able to do. So in the raw mindset, I know that I'm definitely less competitive, but I do know that I can push with the best of them at least. So my mindset is more of let's do what we can and try and stay healthy as we are building up, hitting heavy singles. For the equipment, there is always a shot that somebody may miss. There's always a shot that somebody may be high that day. So if, for that, the mentality shifts to let's get every last inch that we can. And if we get hurt, then we get hurt and trying to roll into that. So I think my mentality is a little bit more reckless with attempt selection, a little bit more reckless with what I take in practice. Basically, raw is consistent. 
safe <laughs> equipped lifting for me is more uh, okay we got this let's hop it up to something big and pray somebody blinks when they're looking at my deck <laughs> So specifically, like, what uh, what went into the decision to come into this meet? Um, at, since, like, Ch uh, Kelsey, you're the reigning world champion right now in equipment. You finish in second in the World Games. Like, you have a huge resume. Um, what what was the motivation for doing Classic Open Nationals? Um, I mean, part of it was it it gave me a chance to actually uh, put focus on my raw numbers, which I won't do if I'm just looking at the next equip meet. Um, and there was a external uh, strong influence that gave a lot of encouragement to come. Um, but ultimately it, it kind of came down to, I know if I was just at home training, I wouldn't try to push them as much. If I just felt they weren't there that day, I'd probably just be doing a lot of volume instead of actually trying to see where my raw numbers were. Um, so that's kind of partially what was my influ uh, decision to, to come down and kind of throw my hat in the ring on the raw side. Um, and then supported very strongly. Um, I think back in November, uh, it was kind of thrown out there of like, mark, mark your calendar for this one. Um, and it was kind of see what shape we were in after Worlds in uh, in Denmark. Um, so I was not too beat up for it. So I was like, oh, we might as well see what happens. Well, I would say there are four strong motivations for me doing this. First of all, it's in Texas. I live here. It's three hours to get here, three hours to get back. I'm very. It's very easy for me to navigate. Second, there wasn't a lead up like extra qualifier I had to do, like IPF meets helped me get here. So I was like, well, that's even less costs. Third is I like getting stronger. Getting stronger, it's exciting. It's always fun to hit PRs, increase your totals. So I wanted to make sure I do that on a platform that's legitimate and you know that you earn the lift. And fourth, why not make Powerlifting America as best as it can? So we are trying to grow this organization and try to put as much as we can into giving back to the lifters, giving back to the spotters, the loaders, the referees. And I think a little bit of appreciation of that is, you know, making certain that I get a chance to, you know, more numbers, more exposure, that sort of thing. So, you know, let's, even though it's weird to say giving back as a lifter, I would say that, that the motivation is like, let's work and, you know, up the numbers a little bit, make it look, make it make this a real nice production. How much did the Alico barbecue play a role in the guys came in? <laughs> <laughs> Should I increase that to number five? Five reasons? Should I say that? <laughs> there may have been a hidden fifth reason I wasn't going to mention, but let's just say I love barbecue to death. <laughs> Couldn't call myself a Texan if I said otherwise. After this, uh, we're going to be seeing you both at uh, Equip Nationals in Scottsdale then in June? Or are yeah. you going raw now? No, you'll see me in June. <laughs> you'll see me in June, yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> I think some raw lifters will be having a side relief. So. <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for joining us, and um, congratulations again on your great performances today and all of your amazing accolades that you've had throughout these years. So you're both amazing people and great lifters, so thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.